morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN Weekly for Saturday, June 11th, 2022. It's been another great week of shows with great contributors and great topics. We kicked off the week discussing how to have better ESG conversations with clients. Let's take a look. Yeah, they are. And, and, the, and the questions are coming from all sorts of different angles. Some of them are about better understanding of, of what it's about. Some of it's about choices. Some of it's expressing opinions about people want and don't want. So so there's there's definitely an awful lot about this area, which is in flux. So a lot of questions, a lot of conversations that are worth having with uh, with clients about this. There's, there is a big variation, um, and, and that's definitely true in the US in, in terms of some people are really embracing it and others are very skeptical, as, as you know. And that's somewhat true in the rest of the world as well. So I think if we were to generalize, we'd say the US is probably somewhat behind on average. But as you know, the average really doesn't tell you much about the real world a lot of the time. There's a big variation um, between where people sit on this. And, and so I, I think you have to kind of take it case by case um, for individual investors about what, what they're looking for and what's possible for them. Um, we, you know, we think everyone sees the world the same way we do. I mean, there's certain things that we just say, well, it, this, this is obvious. You know, clearly the financial interest trumps other um, objectives. You, you might assume that, but maybe for someone um, in particular, that's not the case. Maybe they are willing to you know, trade off. For other people, it might be, well, clearly if you're, taking these other factors into account, that must be costing you something financially. And, and other people would say, no, why, why does it have to be the case that, that there's a trade-off here? I believe it is possible to you know, be very successful financially whilst also taking care of, of the other factors. And so I think that those sorts of assumptions that, that we make, it's worth stepping back and making sure that whoever it is we're talking to agrees with you on, on those fundamental beliefs and once you've worked out where you're starting from, then you can start to work out what's the right way to invest in that particular situation. And, and, and it, it's possible to, to start to make moves in, in this direction without you know, giving up everything that, that you believe about investment. So, so, for example, just as a first step, it's becoming possible now to, to understand more about the, the impact in a broader sense, not just the financial impact, but say, you know, the carbon emissions of your portfolio it's possible to get more information about that than used to be available in the past. Now, that information is worth gathering. One, because it might be financially relevant. You know, once you start to know this, well, maybe you know, there's going to be more legislation or maybe public opinion is going to change and the polluters are going to struggle financially. You know, then maybe they're going to face um, struggles in order to keep performing as strongly as they have in the past. So, so it's worth having that information about, say, the carbon footprint of your portfolio. Wasn't even available really a few years ago. It's starting to become available now. Data's not perfect, but it's better than it was. Just having that information, even if you're not changing how you invest today, that starts to give you something to work with. And once you've got that, you can start to think, well, is this financially significant or even do I actually prefer a low carbon footprint port portfolio, even if I think it's got the same financial returns? So, so it might be that I've you know, got these investments. I can't tell the difference in the prospects between A and B, but I know that B it is, is a greener portfolio. I'm going to prefer that. Again, some people will say, absolutely, that's the way you go. It's obvious. Others will say, I don't want anything to do with that. But that's, that's the type of thing which is becoming possible now and once you have that conversation, we'll find, well, what's the demand? And you get this cycle of, well, if people want it, the products will be built. Once the products are available, financial advisors can talk to their clients. Is this product suitable for you? Is it not? And so the market kind of sorts out what's the right way to go. What, what do people really want here? What's the most effective way to invest and the right way to invest for any given individual? So, the, so those are the types of changes that are, that are happening now as this data becomes available, as the analytics start to improve. Next up, we discuss the true cost of aging. Let's take a look. 
Great question. You know, so many of us don't really think about it until it's far too late, frankly, or we see a loved one maybe struggling. But the true cost of living for older adults isn't really captured by so many of the measures out there. Your typical Social Security income or retirement income doesn't actually take into account the true cost. So at the National Council on Aging, we look to the Gerontology Institute at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. They've created a tool called the Elder Index, and that really takes into account account the true cost, the market basket of goods related to housing and health care, trans transportation, food, so much else, and really looks at geography as well as household composition and health status to give us a good sense of the true cost, the out-of-pocket cost of aging. Well, what's great about the Elder Index is it draws upon federal and state data sets that really drill down uh, by county to look at the real costs in ways that the Consumer Price Index does not. So, for instance, for older adults, they experience disproportionate out-of-pocket health care costs, whether it be Medicare premiums, co-pays, out-of-pocket, prescription drugs, in ways that the Consumer Price Index does not. Additionally, there can be those housing costs and the variation by geography that are significant, even for those free and clear of a mortgage, that increasing property tax cost um, can pack a real punch. And so when uh, you look at the Elder Index, what's powerful is it really rolls those expenses up. And on average, um, a couple in the U.S. aging, wishing to age in their own home, um, without a mortgage needs over $56,000 annually. And when you contrast that by a typical um, Social Security benefit for a couple, which is about 33 k you can see how so often individuals come up short. Well, for older adults, the climbing inflation is really packing a, a hard punch because many are living on a fixed income. Actually, one in four older adults receiving Social Security rely on it for 90% of their income. And when you look at inflation climbing above 8% and you compare that to this year's cost of living adjustment on Social Security, which was just shy of 6%, the numbers don't add up. Um, really inflation, the costs at the grocery store, filling up at the pump, filling the prescription at the uh, pharmacy, they are taking a big bite out of that social security check. Well, with our first breath, we're each aging and it's far better than the alternative, as we like to say. Um, the gift of longevity really is a miracle and um, quite an accomplishment of our generation. But the road to poverty and the precariousness of aging without the health and economic security we all desire starts early in life. It really does. And so raising our awareness and getting a better understanding of the true costs is essential. So understanding those real costs of what Medicare does and doesn't cover, um, doing that advanced planning, utilizing tools like the Secure Act 1.0 and now Secure Act 2.0, um, hopefully bipartisan support, and we'll see that get across the finish line, yep, could provide cross. more opportunity, right? More opportunity for individuals to leverage employer-sponsored retirement savings plans. Uh, Secure Act 2.0 has us particularly excited by the prospect of extending employer-based savings to part-time workers part-time workers, often women, communities of color that don't have that vehicle right now. So the earlier you start, the more often you contribute, the better off you are. But we also have to strengthen some of the most basic social safety net. Um, in particular, we're really advocating for expansion of home and community-based services. We saw during the pandemic how essential care work is, whether it be taking care of our children, taking care of our elders. There's no work without care work. And so we continue to advocate for Medicaid expansion of home and community-based services. Well, we're halfway through when we come back. The other half of our best segments for the week, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN Weekly. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. 
We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We also discussed the link between dental health and mental health. Let's take a look. You're right. People are often surprised that your overall mental health impacts your health in general, and particularly your oral health. Dentists are sometimes one of the first people to pick up on mental health issues. And they actually make a lot of referrals to therapists because the health of your teeth and gums gives us a little bit of a clue about your stress level, your anxiety, even the way that you eat. So when you open up your mouth and look inside, it actually gives quite a picture of how your mental health might be doing. People who have high levels of anxiety, for example, and in our world right now, people are experiencing high levels of anxiety. We often hear complaints about jaws feeling either uh, tight or very um, painful. And when you have high levels of anxiety, people often have sleep problems and they grind their teeth at night. So if you wake up in the morning and your teeth are feeling very sensitive, it may be reflective of high levels of anxiety. Also depression. A lot of the patients that I work with who are feeling depressed sometimes simply don't have the energy or the motivation to take care of their oral health. So some of these conditions really have a direct impact on your day-to-day -day life. A surprising side effect of medication is what is known as dry mouth. And dry mouth occurs when the saliva in your mouth is depleted. And this is really important because saliva, when you don't produce enough of it, leads to tooth decay. So if you're someone who is taking medication, it may be important to check in with your dentist and your therapist to see if there is an interaction effect. Se several of the medications that can cause dry mouth are antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. And so this can actually be impacting your mental health more than you realize. Also, when your oral health is struggling, it can also impact or exacerbate your mental health and your quality of life. So for example, if you're feeling embarrassed about the quality of your teeth, it may make you want to isolate more, it, you stay away from other people. You may feel really socially anxious, feeling like people are looking at your mouth because we do tune into our mouths a lot. We smile, we interact with people. So this may be important to your overall quality of life, checking in with both a therapist and your dentist. Lastly, do you have a great idea? Well, we talked about how to take that great idea and make it into a great product. Let's take a look. In any type of economic trouble, we found that uh, people 
come out and want want to create things, become much more entrepreneurial. They've got a, lot, a little more time on their hands, time to think about things and and come up with ways to solve problems that they have. Uh, so we're you know we're always looking for new products. But yeah, it, it, in times like the pandemic, we we, we did we got. A, a lot of new inventors uh, interested in, in in our services. Uh, I do speak to a lot of inventors every day uh, from all all walks of life, all, all different ages. But usually, uh, I find that that they're trying to solve everyday problems, whether it's in the kitchen uh, for their own, you know, cooking or, or at their job. Uh, a tool that might actually make their job go more easily, more quickly. Uh, a lot of them come up with prototypes. Uh, really out of necessity to, uh, to, to do that function, uh, whether it's their everyday life or, or, or at work. So um, a lot of it is just, uh, you know, you might just come up with an idea when you wake up in the morning or really just like, I wish this were easier to do. I could save so much more time if I could do this function um, uh, with, with a different type of tool. So generally, um, you know, you, you can help hire a company, uh, like I said, invent help who, who who could step you through that whole process. But what you really want to do is make sure that you uh, uh, have a patentable idea. Getting a, a, a patentability search done is 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 really important and not that expensive. Um, but really, uh, uh, kind of developing it in a way that makes sense, even if it's a cocktail napkin type idea. As long as you can convey the uh, what what the invention is um, uh, on the event help side. Uh, they, they can help package it in a way that makes sense. But um, uh, you, you don't have to have a lot. You don't have to have um, uh, a lot of resources to come up with an idea. What, what is the, the difficult part is actually meeting companies, meeting the right person in a company who can, who can make that product come to life. Um, and, and we usually do that. And if, if the company likes it and they want to get involved in a license agreement, we would negotiate a license agreement. But um, just coming up with an idea, you just have to uh, just just be creative. Figure out ways uh, of, 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 of of making it easier for for yourself for everybody else. Infomercial products are different than any other uh, other type of products. They have to catch your attention really quickly. Yeah, um, you have to understand it and say you know say wow like I I, I get that product. I get how that's going to solve uh, a particular problem that I have. And it really needs to be uh, a mass market product. Um, if it's, if it's just for babies, it's probably not necessarily good enough for an infomercial infomercial has to really, really cover the masks because it's very expensive to buy that media time. Um, so, uh, l- looking at, uh, at, you have to look at a, a new product, especially in an infomercial, like you're saying about the pitch part, um, it has to be demonstrable you have to be able to say, uh, you know, many things quickly that the, uh, potential consumer understands and thinks that the, that that they need that product, and uh, you know, usually it's a drive to retail. So you, you were mentioning about distributors. Our company, we work with the manufacturers. So the the manufacturers who have an existing product line and want to uh, make an addition to that product line, um, we try to provide them with inventions using you know certain keywords so that they understand what uh, what, what the invention is and maybe what they they might want to take on. And at that point, uh, they would add that to the product line, and then. It's their job to actually sell it to Home Depot, Walmart, uh, whatever that distribution outlet might be. And that wraps up this episode of BRN Weekly. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news in lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, we'll visit our website, and of course, our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for BRN Sunday. I'll be joined by members of the media, academia, and financial services as we analyze all the news and events for the week. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts 
so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.